Hello everyone, it is officially September, which means it is now the best time of the year for reading. <laughs> We're gonna be transitioning into the fall aesthetics, vibes, spooky stuff, my favorite types of books, basically. <laughs> so today I have a list for you of books that I think are perfect for the fall season, but first I think we need to redecorate. Much better. <laughs> But first, a message from today's sponsor, Ana Luisa. If you've been on my channel for a little while, you might recognize Ana Luisa as a consistent sponsor of mine. I love their product and I think they're so awesome. They are a carbon neutral, water neutral, sustainable luxury jewelry company, and their pieces start at just $39. The style of their jewelry is simple and sophisticated and it's literally just my taste. I loved all the pieces I've gotten from them. I especially love their necklaces. I think they're just simple but they all have personality and they can really elevate an outfit. So this time around I got all necklaces from them. Starting off with this piece that I got from my friend Stephanie. This is a really simple but sophisticated black disc. She wears a lot of sort of darker colors and jewel tones and stuff. So I think this will go really well with a lot of what she wears. And she is a professional these days. And I think this is cute, but still like good to wear in the office. It's not too loud or anything, but it's really elegant. Then for myself, I got this mood pendant necklace. I thought that was just kind of a fun idea. I've never really been into mood rings or anything in the past, but I really like necklaces. And if this actually changes colors, I will be thrilled. I'm sure it does, but I just think it's really fun. And I liked the shape of the stone and how it catches the light, I think is really pretty. It's a little bit more unique than just a black stone. I thought this was a lot of fun. And I think this will go really well with some fall outfits of mine. So I'm really excited for this one. This next one is a simple chain with some green beading. Green is one of my favorite colors, especially this dark sort of foresty emerald green. I think this will go with a lot of my outfits and I like that it's a really delicate gold chain so the beads aren't too chunky or anything. Again, that's really more of my style and I just think this is a really cute pop of color. And finally, I got this other piece. It's a really pretty pearl inset into like a gold backing and I just think this is so elegant. Honestly, Pearls will pretty much go with anything and gold I wear a lot of, so I can see myself wearing this. I just, I love all these pieces. I think they're, they're so pretty. So again, thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sending me these pieces to share with you guys today. I also have a unique code down at the bottom of my description box. It's Lexi's Library 10. When they're not running a sale, you can use this code at any time for an additional 10% off. So yeah, feel free to check out that link and use that code if you're at all curious about Anna Louise's jewelry. And now back to the fall book recommendations. So diving right into the books, we're going to start with For the Wolf by Hannah Witten, which is a book that I read last year and absolutely fell in love with. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and a smidge of Red Riding Hood. We follow Rhaedaris, who is the second daughter of a kingdom who for generations have had to sacrifice their second daughters for the wolf in order to maintain control over the land and stop the forest basically from taking over. Rhaedaris has really resigned herself to this fate, but her sister and her kind of boyfriend are obviously very upset about this and are trying to find ways to save Rhaedaris. She ends up on her birthday going into the woods and finding out things are not what they thought they were. This has a amazing slow burn romance in the center of this novel that I absolutely loved. The love interest literally smells like books. I mean, come on. But yeah, I thought this was a lot of fun. This is part one of a duology. The second book wasn't my favorite, but I do really love this first book still. And I think it just has the perfect spooky woods vibes that really are just fabulous for fall reading. It's a great segue into the season. And if you're a mood reader like me, I definitely recommend picking this one up. Next up, we have The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. This isn't the most obvious, like, fall vibes romance that's out there. I think something like The X-Hex might be a little bit more obvious, but this one I thought was actually a really good read for fall. We follow a character named Florence Day, who is a ghostwriter and can also see ghosts. So that's really fun, in my opinion. And her and a ghost actually end up catching feelings for one another. 
and they kind of have to battle that and how doomed that seems to be. There's also a couple romantic walks through graveyards, uh, lots of crows that kind of symbolize when um, a ghost is around. There's also a funeral parlor in her family that they run. And yeah, death is as much a part of this book as love is. And I think that makes for a really good fall read where, you know, it's it's not quite spooky, but it's a place to kind of explore some of those feelings of the afterlife and such that I think people who do like spooky reads will also appreciate. This was a lot of fun. And I actually think it's another Raylo fanfic turned book. So that's interesting. <laughs> Didn't know that when I read it, but I can see it now. So as far as I think this is the only romance on my list or the only like straight out romance. But uh, yeah, definitely pick this one up if you like something like the X-Hex. I think this was a good fall romance. Next up, we have Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. I feel like I've been talking about this one a lot lately on my channel because I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. I thought this was so atmospheric has the feeling of like a grim fairy tale, which I think is perfect for fall. There's a scene in this book where she's literally constructing a dog out of bones. That's probably as spooky as this book gets, but we also have like a goblin market and there's a lot of really like grim fantastical things. There's a woman named a dust wife who can communicate with the dead. So it's just like so many elements that I think would make for a really good fall book, even though this book doesn't explicitly like take place in the fall. I think the vibes are there for sure. And this is a really fun like standalone fairy tale esque story that I highly recommend reading. It's blowing up. It's really popular right now. I know this, but like for a reason, it's so good. I'm realizing I have a lot of 2022 releases on this list, but uh, oh well. Next up we have Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This book is pure vibes. If you like haunted houses, if you like ghost stories, this is a fabulous read for the fall season. This is the Owl Crate edition and it's like all black. I love it. And I think it really communicates the, the atmosphere of this book quite well. We follow a young girl named Olivia Pryor who is an orphan and she ends up receiving a letter from a relative, like a distant relative, asking her to visit Gallant, which is the family estate. She doesn't really know much about it other than her mom, who passed away a few years ago, has warned Olivia not to go to Gallant, but she's really desperate for family and familial connection, and she feels compelled to at least check this out. And when she gets there, she finds that her relatives were not actually expecting her. So she's like, what's going on? Olivia can also see ghosts, like specters, kind of. If you've seen Crimson Peak, that's kind of how I imagine she views the ghosts. Like Crimson Peak, this isn't a ghost story, but it's a story with ghosts, if that makes any sense. They play like a really vital part of the story and death plays a really vital part of the story, but ultimately it's not just about that. There's some beautifully spooky illustrations in this book. They're like ink draw or ink illustrations that are just, they communicate the vibes just so perfectly. There's also this diary that her mom left behind that is so creepy and gothic and just heartbreaking. And like this book just, it, it really touched me. I know a lot of people were a little disappointed by this because it definitely reads a bit younger for V.E. Schwab book. But again, it's pure vibes. And I, I loved this book so much. I honestly kind of want to reread it now that it is fall because I think that's the best setting for it. There's a lot, like I said, to do with death. There's this sort of thinning between worlds in this book. And I don't really want to go into it more than that. But it's really good and I liked it a lot. And there's a really creepy villain that is similar to other V.E. Schwab antagonists, I think, where they are like the embodiment of death or shadow, but it's she does it well, so I'm not mad. Strongly recommend this book. It's creepy if you like Crimson Peak, but like want something a little bit more or less scary, I suppose. Definitely recommend. All right, this is the last 2022 release, I think, on this list. And that is The Duel or A Duel with the Vampire Lord by Elise Kova. This is her most recent release in her Married to Magic series. And this is obviously about vampires, which 
perfect for, for fall, perfect for Halloween coming up. I really liked how she tackled the vampire mythology. I think like there's so many stories about vampires. There's sort of a lot of like rules that, you know, make a vampire a vampire. And I think she tackled a lot of those and like used the ones she wanted without completely ignoring the ones that she didn't want to use. Like she was able to address them, but like kind of explain them away a little bit. But yeah, this was a really fun read. We follow a forge maiden named Florian. She ends up getting kidnapped by a vampire lord in order to help break a curse that has been put on the vampires for thousands of years. And there's a really fun mystery at the center of this. A really like slow burn pining romance as well. And I think if you like vampire romances, this tackles it very well. There's a couple scenes that are like legitimately scary in this book. There's a decrepit crumbling castle and like some sections have been closed off because they've been overrun by these cursed vampires that are just like mindless blood sucking monsters. They have to like go into this part of the castle at some point to try to look for a clue about the curse. Those guys are legit scary. Like, it felt like playing a horror game um, when they were crawling through those sections of the castle. So perfect balance, I think, of romance and adventure and a little bit of spooky. So I think that makes this a really good fall read. This one's become a bit of a classic by now for being like a really good atmospheric fall read, but I'd feel remiss if I didn't mention it. That is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. This also has the feeling kind of a grim fairy tale. We have a very familiar, like, vaguely medieval-ish inspired setting. We follow a young girl whose name escapes me as Nezhka, Agnieszka. She's sort of plucked from her village and becomes the apprentice of sorts to this wizard named the Dragon who protects the area. There's sort of like for the wolf, a enchanted forest that is trying to consume everything around it. It's incredibly dangerous. There's so much that happens in this book. Like it kind of felt like two or three books in one, honestly. There's really like the, the forest is legit creepy. Like the, the trees eat people kind of, which is a very oversimplistic explanation of what is actually happening. But like, that's just to kind of give you the idea. There's a lot of like Na nature magic and stuff at the center of this. Agnieszka has a very different approach to magic than the dragon does and that kind of sets them at odds against one another at first because he just thinks like she's an idiot. She has a very like inherent feeling about the magic and he's much more like studious book smart. Like that was a fun dynamic between the two. Very, He's very grumpy if you like I wouldn't call her sunshine, but if you like a grumpy love interest, he's definitely one of them. And yeah, I I feel like I've barely even touched upon everything that this book is about, but this is a great like spooky woods vibes book. So definitely recommend if you're interested in reading this, maybe pick it up this fall. This next one was a pretty popular release last year. It's a YA standalone horror. It was wild. <laughs> that is Small Favors by Aaron A. Craig. This story follows a very secluded community. They live really far from civilization and one must trek through the woods to get there. And twice a year, a band of people get together to go to the closest village and collect supplies that they can't grow or produce themselves. On the latest supply run, the group gets attacked and savagely murdered by they don't know what. It seems animalistic, but like nothing they've ever seen from an animal before. The woods themselves seem to be like starting to be corrupted by something and like the animals are mutated and weird. The townspeople are obviously one upset that, you know, loved ones died during this and two like paralyzed by fear of like they don't know what happened and how to prevent it from happening again. And this really instigates a series of events in which neighbor turns on neighbor and they become very suspicious of one another. Our main character is the daughter of the local apiarist and someone sets fire to their fields at one point and like that makes the bees suffer. And it's just like tiny little petty things just slowly start to escalate into really incredible crimes against one another and like everyone is suspicious of everyone else. This feels claustrophobic in a way where like 
like they can't escape this madness that is overtaking their town but like they don't know what to do to solve the problem there's also if you like little kid characters that like talk to imaginary friends as if they're real or like something like that like this has that as well so that's creepy i believe this is like very loosely a rumpelstiltskin retelling but like when I say loosely, I mean incredibly loosely. I don't know. I thought this was really interesting and different, like just super unique, especially for the YA, like horror fantasy genre. I thought this was so much fun. Again, in like a really horrific kind of way, of course, um, where you're watching this community absolutely tear itself apart. This was incredibly spooky, incredibly atmospheric. And where it's a standalone, like a lot of these are standalones, actually. I think this is a perfect read for fall. Don't let the cover deceive you. I know this kind of gives you like spring summer vibes, but it's like the sickly sweet of decay really more than anything else. So misleading, but intentionally so I think. I may have talked about this next book on my list last year for fall recommendations, but I'm going to mention it again because one, it is one of my favorite authors and two, I think it is the ding dang spookiest book I've ever read and that is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. As the title suggests, this is a gothic horror novel that takes place in Mexico. Our main character, Noemi, receives a letter from her cousin. Her cousin recently got married to sort of a total stranger. They don't know nothing about their family, but they seem rich and well off, so it seems like a good match. When her cousin writes her, it's like very obvious that something is distressing her cousin, and it seems like the crazed ramblings of you know, a very, very scared, distressed, mentally unwell person. So Noemi's father urges her to go visit her cousin and find out like what the heck is happening. She arrives at this estate where her cousin is now living with her husband and she's, there's just so much going on. Noemi has no idea at first, but she definitely has this creepy, like unsettled feeling upon first arriving. She starts getting these really weird dreams about what's happening and like her cousin's family won't even really let her see her cousin unsupervised. So there's this incredible mystery at the center of this and like it is so spooky, like foggy graveyards, crumbling mansions. And then there's also this underlying theme of like colonialism and racism and eugenics and it's just... It's creepy all around. I think about this book so much, especially when like, I get like asked, like, what are your recommendations for spooky books? I don't read a lot of horror and thriller, but like this is at the top of any one of those lists that I could make. It's so good. I think there's supposed to be like a mini series in development for this. I really hope so, because I would love to see the way that like Sylvia Moreno Garcia writes is so lush and vivid. It's very cinematic, like as you're reading it. And I would love to actually see a visual format for this come to life. I think that would be so good. <laughs> this is like a perfect story for that. So I would love to see an adaptation of this one day and strongly recommend for fall. These next two books are starts of series, um, sort of like For the Wolf, but I believe each one of these is going to be longer than just a duology. First up is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. This has a sequel out at the at the moment, Kingdom of the Cursed, and I think the last book comes out this fall, and I cannot remember the name of it at the moment. Um, it's Kingdom of the something. This is a, f I don't want to say fun murder mystery, because like the main character's twin is murdered, and like that was objectively not fun, but... <laughs> Yeah, we follow a witch named Amelia, whose sister gets murdered at the beginning of this book. She doesn't know who did it or why, but she is determined to solve this. She wants revenge for her sister. She wants justice for the situation. No one seems to care very much. I mean, like her family does, obviously, but like no one can move beyond their grief in order to figure out what the heck happened. So Amelia is really determined to figure this out and she ends up summoning a demon in order to kind of serve her and help her figure this out. That demon turns out to be Wrath, one of the seven princes of hell. This was not her intention, but he is bound to her and must help her solve this mystery. And he also seems to have motivations of his own for solving this mystery, which intrigues Amelia. Their banter is a lot of fun. 
Uh, if you like, like, witches and demons, this is a great book. She ends up encountering several of the demons in of hell in both this book and the sequel. And this one leaves off on such a cliffhanger. You're going to immediately want to pick up the next book, which largely takes place in hell. So it's even better. But um, yeah, this was a lot of fun, despite sort of some of the upsetting content. There's a lot of, like I said, witchcraft and stuff. So I think that makes for a good like Halloween vibe read. I can't wait for the third one to come out. This has been such a fun series. I will say the second one does sort of abandon the murder mystery element for a very large chunk of the book. And this other mystery ends up kind of cropping up that takes time away from that. So that I think like was not everyone's favorite, but I still had fun with the sequel. It definitely, this one starts pretty YA, but the next one solidly moves into new adult territory so content warnings for like sexual matters and content and stuff like that but this is a fun ride perfect for fall i think the next one comes out in september or october i can't wait and lastly i don't know if i'm just like really feeling vampires right now i'm like in my vampire phase but we have empire of the vampire by jay kristoff this book is thick uh clearly <laughs> so it's not a quick or light read by any means this is gory it's gross some of the the way the characters talk even is really gross and upsetting but <laughs> it's um it's definitely a vampire book in which the vampires are monstrous as heck so if you don't care for like the sexy vampire thing happening i think this is a really fun adventure we follow a vampire slayer character named gabriel and he is what is known as a silver saint he was trained to be a vampire hunter he has vampire blood in his veins which helps him combat them better than a normal human could and this is told in a couple different timelines we start with him in jail and he's being interviewed by a vampire <laughs> about his backstory and we are kind of building up to why he's wound up in this jail in the first place. We go back to his youth and how he finds out that he's part vampire and how he ends up joining the Silver Saints later. There's a forbidden romance happening. There's this like vampire king who is incredibly terrifying. There's a couple different like houses of vampires and stuff too. So this is an incredibly engaging but large world. And I had so much fun with this. Again, some of the ways the characters speak feels a little like amateur cringy but if you can get beyond that the story at the center of this is really good and i enjoyed it a lot and i can't wait for the sequel i have no idea when it comes out it's a thick boy so um wouldn't be surprised if it took a little bit longer i don't even know what the second book is going to be called if you like creepy vampires this is a perfect series to start highly recommend next up we have juniper and thorn by ava reed and <laughs> this is an adaptation of what is described as the Grimm Brothers' darkest fairy tale, and it certainly reads that way. We follow a girl named Marlin Shin, who is the daughter of a wizard, and her and her sisters are secluded and, like, kept isolated from the rest of their community, and they're sort of, like, a sideshow thing at this point. It's it's very based off of like Russian history and culture. The rest of the world is industrializing, but like her father refuses to engage and participate in that. But some people still come and visit them for like certain cures. Each of her and her sisters have like a specific ability. And Marlin Shin can read people based off of touch. So like if she touches them bare skin to bare skin, she can like read their past and stuff, which is an interesting ability. I, I did like the way the magic worked in this world. But this is, like, the trigger warnings for this book are so intense because it is so dark. Like, if you have any sensitivity towards, like, eating disorders or, like, self-harm or suicidal ideation, I would definitely be careful when you're picking this book up. There's, like, it's intense and, like, grotesque, but the writing is so beautiful. <laughs> it's a really weird balance, and I don't think it's for everybody, but the atmosphere of this book is so creepy again it's got that like fairy tale vibe but much darker there's a lot of death involved in this book and then there's a lot of like trying to escape abuse and 
just a, oppressive situations. So this is an incredibly dark read. If you're going to pick it up at all, I think fall is the perfect time. But again, would strongly suggest looking up content warnings for this because I like I'm not bothered by much. But there was a couple parts of this book that had me feeling very squeamish, so just be warned. And then to end on a cute note, I have two sort of graphic novel comic recommendations. The first one being Hollow. This is a, I believe, standalone graphic novel that is based off of the um, Sleepy Hollow story by Washington Irving. We follow a couple teenagers in modern day, slowly realizing that the Headless Horseman is real and why he exists in the first place. And it's a really fun romp. There is this curse in the town of Sleepy Hollow. We follow descendants of some of the characters from the original story, like a Van Tassel and a Crane. And the dynamic was really fun. And I think if you liked Pumpkin Heads, this is a good follow up kind of to that. Different authors and I think even publishers, but some more feelings, I think. Like it's cozy and fun and cute, but it's also very like fall Halloween y vibes. So if you're not into the actually spooky stuff, this is a great read to pick up. And then another comic that I just picked up and loved was Cryptid Club by Sarah Anderson. I actually don't think this is out as of like this very moment, but I think it comes out at the end of September and it is a compilation of Sarah Scribble's comics about cryptids like the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot and aliens and the Kraken and Slenderman and stuff like that. They all like interact with one another and there's just it's a lot of like cute fun times that make these characters that are normally quite creepy and scary quite endearing. Oh my god Mothman too. <laughs> I'm like I'm trying to pick a favorite character from her comics and I can't because they're just so charming. So yeah this is like you know, each comic is a standalone, but I think it's a really fun, fast read. If you're looking for like a Halloween themed comic compilation, this is the perfect one. She has published several of these on her Instagram, but there are also quite a few that were at least new to me. I just thought these were delightful. So <laughs> I think it's also a good way, like if you like have kids that are scared of these things to make them less scary, you know, like give them a bit of humanity and personality. But yeah, that was a an arc that I read recently. Again, I do believe it comes out in se at the end of September, so still in that fall season, and it'll be a perfect read. All right, and that wraps up my fall book recommendations. I hope there were some new to you ones on here. I know I mentioned quite a few like classics or popular recommendations, but I think they're popular for a reason. And if you're anything like me, I I love to read like seasonally appropriate books. And fall is my favorite time of year to do that. I think just the atmosphere of like a fall read is so engaging and fun and I just love it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free if you have any recommendations to leave them down below. I would love to hear them and add them to my TBR. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. My socials are down in the description box below if you feel like following or uh, maybe like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Please remember to check the link down below, use my code, and have a wonderful day. Bye.